All right, we're finally getting an early start here. 10% chance of rain today, 20% tomorrow, and 10% for the next two days. We'll see if anything materializes, but it doesn't take much, just like even kind of a heavy fog or drizzle could cause problems. The goal today is to rush to the top of the roof, doing all the main easy field slates, like all the big slates, because at least a third of the time is going to be taken up by fitting and making these small corner pieces that go like right on the ends like little triangles and I can cover those really easy with like a metal ridge. I already have some pieces of metal I've been using up there. I just screw those in place and that should protect the roof from leaking. Okay let's get started. Check out the wild doves there. Pretty neat. Okay, we're here at my other slate roof project and this cupola right here is uh, not finished yet. So I still have these brackets up here and I need these for the other roof. Rather than finish this, I'm just gonna take these brackets down, use them on the other roof. I'll put them back um, when I come back to finish this later. So you can see here, there's three nails. Those nails are holding this bracket on. And I can just uh, take this off, unhook those, go use them and then hook them back on. Some chicken bones up here from the ravens come up here and they sit on top of there and eat stuff like from the compost and stuff. But I'm definitely going to take these two to start with. It's experiments I was doing for that cupola. See? So all that's hanging that bracket on was these three nails. I just leave those in. So when I'm done with these nails and I don't need the bracket up here anymore and I'm like coming down the roof, I'll just pull these out with a pair of nail nippers and try to work them out and then slip a piece of flashing underneath there. Just like that up into here and it'll be hidden by the slates but it will prevent the roof from leaking from these holes that are through this slate right here. Pretty simple, pretty cool though. So with this one, these slates are too close to the edge right here, and I can't push the, the bracket up any further. I don't see any solution except to pull these nails. Well, that was easy, so if they all come out that easy. Okay, well that one, those two I could pry against the... Here we go. And then so that these don't leak if it rains on Friday, it's like it's supposed to. I just put that there. More nail holes right here. I'm not sure. I don't know why that's like that. <clears throat> but that fixes that. So uh, let me show you some reasons that I'm picking different uh, slates over others. So this one's great. It's uh, really hard. You hear that? It's got a really hard sound to it. The thickest part of the slate, though, is up here. That's no good. The thick part should be on the bottom. That's unfortunate because otherwise this is a great slate. But if I try to use this, I'll put this down and then the next course will like cantilever up off of this thick base here because it's uh, twice as thick as the, this down here. Okay, this slate looks good, but it doesn't sound good. It sounds soft and it sounds cracked. So then I can, you know, examine it because there might be just like a, a flake of slate that's sitting on the face of the, the thing, uh, making it sound dull. That could be like right here. Or there could be a hidden crack that I can't see and I don't see anything. But I'm not gonna use it because it sounds too dull. Now this one looks pretty good, except it's really warped. It has like a propeller twist to it pretty much a big problem. I'll tell you later about how I got this slate and some cautions about buying slate left over from jobs, which is what this was. Okay, so this slate looks great too, but I'm not hearing much ring, and that's because of this right here probably. That's enough to reject that one. And again, we see these guys consistently punching these slates on the thick end, which is not what I want. Too bad. It's like they did it on purpose. 
Okay, finally one that's punched at the thin end. This one looks good. Like if there's a clump of dirt stuck on the slate, that'll cause it to uh, be dull sounding. This is a piece of Welsh slate that I found at like a yard sale or something. I had a Welsh dragon painted on it. Listen to that. That's nice slate. It rings pretty good, but you can hear kind of a rattling listen. You hear that kind of buzz? That's this right here. See? There's another piece here. And every piece that comes off, like there's another issue right here. This stuff's flaky. And it's just gonna ring better and better as all that comes off. This is a good slate. So I'm well along on the uh, either third or fourth course, depending on how you count it. I have the base course and then three of these. Uh, this pattern, there's only one row. This pattern, there's two rows, and now I'm ready to switch to the next pattern as soon as I get a couple more slates nailed over there. There is a piece missing here, but it's a really small corner. If I just put on the hip slates, that actually would be enough to cover it. And even if there's a big triangle of slate right here, it's only gonna be sticking out from the hip slates just a little bit. My point is that if I can just get this far, with all the slates and not cut all these little triangles, which take a long time. Then I can just put a piece of tin over this and I'll be rain safe. These slates have been sitting outside for like 10 years, so they have a lot of accumulated dirt. So up to this point, I should be protected. Now this is a nice hard slate. Hear that? That's nice. Compare that to this. You can see how this looks kind of chalky. One, two, four, five, six, seven, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. The other thing I want to do is sort these into thick and medium. We'll start with taking the thick ones up in the middle of the roof. So I have enough uh, slates for almost for two rows. I want to use the thinner slates from here over because this decking board is too high. And uh, look at that nail sticking up again, you little bastard. And using thinner, the thinnest slates that I have along there with the thinnest back edges is gonna alleviate that whole problem of having that high decking board. And everything from here over is gonna be thinner, including this one. This slate here is pretty wobbly cupped this way, so it just makes it more exaggerated. Look at that, nice and flat. But there may be a place where this slate will work, especially if the corner is cut off for one of these edges over here. So it's getting hard to reach up here and nail, like it's just getting really awkward and I might be able to pull it off for one more row, but that's definitely the end of it. What I need to do now is assess whether I wanna put some roof jacks on here and, and set a board up to work on right now or wait until this row is nailed. So I'm gonna get the roof jacks up here This jack isn't even made for this low of a roof pitch. <laughs> so we'll see about that. Roof jacks are either gonna go right about here. If it's there and the decking is right here, can I get onto that easily enough? Is that adequate for finishing the roof? Or am I gonna have to add more? You know, on and off, on and off. I mean, I can get up there, but if I have to do it over and over again, so the option is they would be about there. This roof bracket will just hang like that. The nails will go between the slates into the wood decking. And then when it's time to lay slates in that area, these two slates will just be laid like normal with this one underneath missing, just like that. And when it's time to take the brackets off, just slip, the, slip this off, the nails, remove the nails or drive them in and then replace this missing slate like that. We're using a slate hook, which we'll get to later. But it all looks good. The main thing right now is I need to figure out this problem and solve that. I'll just do that on the ground and then bring them back up because I know where to set them now. So I'm just gonna put three screw holes in this. Essentially, I want a block right here 
and I have three screw holes in the bottom to attach it. But what I want is I want this effect where it kind of locks under that. Point being is that then this bracket can't lift like that. I could just put a couple of screws in there, just like, you know, three screws. Let's just do that. Well, if you don't think that's enough and I fall off the roof and die, you can say I told you so. Yeah, I figured out a way to make this just a little more secure. Come in at an angle with a longer screw. I can't really think of too much that would really cause this to fail. So I'm gonna call it good. That's just right. Okay, I'm gonna slate the next row here. And it's back to sorting out through the slate piles. So later when I tell you to be cautious about buying lots of leftover slate from jobs, it's because of this. Like I'm going through the stuff that I rejected already and trying to find some decent material. And there's a good chance I've been through it more than once. I'm actually gonna wax these nails just so they'll come out easier because I'd rather take them out than leave them in. Big ol' high spot right there. See if we can just pop that off without ruining that slate. We having fun yet? We'll talk more later about ring testing the slates and uh, picking slate and what to be careful about if you're buying slate. So if I hang the bracket here, deck is just shy of seven feet, just right. You know, since I'm here, No, I'm not going to do any of these corner slates. It's just a distraction from getting this finished because I could get this done today up to the top, put those metal ridges on, and then I'm set. So I'm just fitting a couple pieces of plywood under here to spread the weight out and keep this jack from like putting a ton of pressure on these slates here. Let's see how this works. Once there's weight on it, I don't think that's gonna go anywhere. I don't know about this piece of decking. It's It looks a little funky and weak, but I'm just gonna get it up there and walk on it a little and see how it feels. I could put in a third roof jack in the middle there if I need to. Looks pretty good. So let's count how many slates we need. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next row will be six, so 13 slates. Let's see how it is to get up here. It looks pretty easy. Yeah. That's not bad. Well, wish me luck. This one's stuck. Stuck. Remember we leave this slate off and then this slate is the corner. We're not doing that yet. So there's two slates we don't need because of the roof brackets or the roof jacks. So here's a good example of a really hard slate. It's like pretty thick too. It's maybe like three eighths, even a little thicker in parts. And uh, you can really hear the difference. You can hear that hard just crunch. Contrast that to like, let's say this. Hear that? It sounds soft, it cuts easy. More or less anyway, the harder the slate, the longer it's gonna last. A lot of the slate on this roof may not last that long. One more slate and stage four is done. We're ready to, for pattern number five. I trimmed the wrong corner off of this slate. That is exceedingly annoying.
cut another slate, a thick slate. First, let's check this out. So this is six, that's four, this is five, this is five, this is six. So two rows of five, and then like five rows of, of number six. So two rows of five though, that's the important part right now. Not super thick. Thick, super thick, super thick, super thick. Thickish. Well, coming along here, as you get towards the top, it goes super fast because there's less slates. But then it becomes this like game of cutting all these little tiny pieces here. And it uh, looks like I have enough stuff to uh, probably finish, but I'll have to make a lot of cuts. You know, I think I'm just going to go get the slate cutter right now because there's just going to be so many of those little pieces to cut. Okay, this is gonna make everything a lot faster because I don't have to get up and down the roof constantly. So there's a couple things here I'm not super happy about. One is this big gap right here, and uh, that's just unfortunate, but you know, I didn't take the time to be super careful about that stuff, so. And there's another one over here, but I think with that one, I might be able to shim the back of it with a piece of wood. I nailed that piece of slate loose, if I recall, so that I could fix this. So I think I'm gonna mess with that real quick and then try to get the rest of this done. Close to the top anyway, because as long as I'm close, I can just put up a piece of tin or something right there. Probably isn't gonna rain overnight, but it's like 20% chance tomorrow and it was supposed to be 10% chance today, which basically means that it may cloud up overnight and start drizzling. You know, I don't wanna have to get up in the middle of the night and deal with anything and I may not hear it, so I'll probably try to be dried in for tonight in case it does rain. I'm definitely ready to quit and go and get some food. Yeah, so, you know, I left this one a little bit loose, but it definitely would help to get like an eighth of an inch spacer under here. This redwood's incredible stuff. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, I lean on the slates all the time. You know, it just depends on where you're leaning and how hard. Uh, you know, most of my weight is still on the, the scaffold, so I can you put lots of weight on this because it's real stable. If I leaned out here on this, like, cantilevered edge, like, that could be a problem, you know. So the problem is when I lift this, it lifts that. So I'm gonna kind of split the difference a little bit and I can still get maybe this piece underneath there. Yeah, there we go. So that brings this down at least a little bit so it doesn't look as bad and it brings this up a little but not too much. So it just sort of split the difference there. Just gonna keep these around in case we need them. Let's lay some slate. So the rest of the pattern is number six. Pattern number six. Got quite a few thick number sixes here, so. Unfortunately, the chalk line that I would snap would snap wood. No, right at the edge of this. Let's see. Yeah, it's pretty much the edge of this board, so I think we can use that as a guide. Oh my God, I'm glad I have the slate cutter up here. It's all cuts from here. All right, so I need holes about an inch and a half below those holes. Okay, I'm getting tired. I almost punched that hole on the wrong side. This is when accidents happen. In a hurry, it's getting dark. You're like hungry. You want a beer, but there isn't any. Rock on. Rock on, Slaters. Where's my pencil? Where it's supposed to be. Imagine that. I seem to have kind of screwed this up here because I want the slate to stay put. Look how it's moving around. I countersink this hole. So that, that kind of locked it in place there. The corners have not been the same. A bigger corner on one side than the other, but the further I get up the roof, the more the same they become. So now they're pretty close to the same, which is really good because I want it to look real symmetrical at the top there. You see this one has a couple drill holes in it. Looks like I cut it upside down for some reason. Yes. 
Yes. Okay, now I can stand from like the scaffolding up to here and even get up here and work. So I'm really glad I didn't have to put in a second set of roof jacks. Oh yeah, looking good. Centered, looks good. See, those are pretty close to the same. At the bottom of the roof, it was about three eighths of an inch off when I started out. Gee, I'm gonna need a shim under that one. Too hard. Just right. Look how much I blew this one out. Too much. It looks like that hole's too low too. I'll just punch another one. It's not a very hard piece of slate. It just, it, it's popping out way easier than I'm expecting it to. I don't, even, I don't like either one of those holes. Still rings pretty good for a thick, soft slate. It's nice, super dull. I left it out in the rain. It got all rusty. I have used uh, slate as a sharpening stone quite a bit. I've also owned like old sharpening stones, you know, antique ones that were slate. Not an uncommon sharpening stone. Just need to shim this up a bit because it's it was real high in the front. We're slaying it. You know, really, I think that's it. I'm tempted to do these two. Now that is a little thin, because this is super thick. That's gonna be a mistake. I should get thick slates to match this for here and here. Snow disc up there, and a couple extra slates for the corners. Stuffed like some of the slate pattern sheet metal over the where the roof jacks are nailed, so that should take care of that. So if it really rains, I'm gonna have a problem. I'm gonna have to get up in the middle of the night and put these metal ridges on. I'm just gonna bet on that not happening. I'll probably hear that and wake up. And I called that wrong. It's raining. Get this over that. Good. And this over. Okay, I didn't make it. All right, I'm just gonna get up and do that. I'll go deal with getting tools and stuff. All I need to get really is like one screw in each one. Yay for rain though, it's about time. Yes. And this is why I'm doing this project. So I don't have to do this anymore. There we go, hit something. Okay, I think I'm dried in enough for the night. Yeah, good call on getting the main <clears throat> roof done, like I said, so these pieces of tin could cover what's left. That was relatively painless. It's not very cold, it's not raining that hard. I'd rather be sleeping, but hey, it worked out all right.